So that's the uh, gear that sits in the quadrant, takes a drive from the spindle, transfers it to the feed box. Um, this is the original one and it's you can see it's had a, no, a very nicely done repair there. It's lost a tooth there. Lost a load of teeth on there. It looks to me as if it's fell off a few times and it's chipped off. It's cast iron. So I made up some blanks, which I'll show you in a moment. Just facing off the first side there. Plenty of light skin, clean it up so it'll uh, sit through. We've got two blanks mounted on a shaft between the centres and we're now bringing the OD down. 131.2mm uh, is the uh, target size. We've got a bit come off yet. I'm just truing at this first pass. I have to say it's running very smooth, albeit it's on its uh, lowest gearing and I'm only running at 23 hertz. I should put it in back gear but then it's a lot noisier and there's no load on it as such. I'm only taking off 10th hour pass because I want a half decent finish and uh, I'm sneaking up on the dimension. We've got about three passes to go and then we're done. Know where they're going. And then I sent them down to my friend uh, Andy Pugh um, who machined up, machined the gears on. Um, what remains is to cut the keyway. They sit on this sleeve and then the sleeve rotates on a, sh on a fixed shaft. So I basically need to cut that keyway. Uh, the tooling I've got for internal works, that, which is too big, and I'd made it so that this end piece was interchangeable. So I've got to make a new one of those that will go in there and carry a key, a, a cutter that will cut that size keyway. And then this bit fits in here. So basically, that sits on there, and you've got this indexing facility round on the uh, serrations and a pair of dogs which locate on it they took a bit of fitting well, that's that pokes through there locks up and uh, I can cut the keyway on the shaper now so first jobs to make myself a blank shaft well I thought I'd better clear the uh, shaper out get it ready for cutting these uh, keyways on the gears uh, welcome to the new subscribers um, this is where my life in reconditioning machinery started uh, I can't remember four or five years ago um, I had a 10 inch stroke a reasonable condition shaper and I needed 14 inches of stroke I actually needed 15 and um, set about looking for one and what I found uh, was an Elliott 14s um, it was a bit smaller than I wanted but it was uh, manageable um, and it was sold as uh, work in order 
there's a, a playlist if you have a look on my channel uh, and it's the Elliot rebuild uh, you can see it, I bought it on basically sight sight unseen if you like just off a photograph on eBay and I think from memory it was a hundred and thirty quid including delivery from the other end of the country now delivery in this in the UK is roughly hundred quid for a pallet so I think I got it discounted at 70 something so yeah the shaper cost me under a hundred quid uh, but I would question whether it actually ran I uh, did a full nuts and bolts strip down and then gradually rebuilt the thing, making new crankshaft for it, um, various bearing sleeves, and then started doing the scraping. And it's all documented in that play series. Uh, and for those of you that have been subscribed a while and have watched that, apologies for going over old ground. Um, what I've basically been doing, just give it a quick clean off. Um, I'm going to go around and lubricate everything at the moment, and I've got to tram the vice in because normally I run it with the vice the other way around. Um, on the basis of if I have a jam up, I'd rather the work get pushed out than something get broken inside. Um, and I've only had it do that once. So uh, I'm going to set, set the camera up and uh, you can just watch me tickling it up. That's within a thou over 10 inches, 8 inches. Uh, it's good enough for government work. Next job is basically go around and do all the lubrication points, of which there are quite a few on a shaper, uh, certainly on my shaper. It's not got a central lube system like on the bigger Cincinnati's or the g &E's that you might see on Steve Summers and uh, a bomb site. With mine, it works on a total loss system. Uh, so. You, we have oil rags on the floor to collect up what dribbles out. Initially, there was just a couple of ports on the end of each side of the ram dovetails. And uh, you pour a squidge in, start of the day, and top it up if it's working hard, or we call it done. I added in the oil pots, and I put in uh, an additional two units either side in the centre, because the centre was really badly scored up. Um, you can see where I've scrape the ram and put in a lot of oil pockets all the way down and it's just got the same on these uh, so there's the ram wants doing the main crank the pivot for the crank which is allows the assembly to move backwards and forwards to allow the indexing uh, bit in there and then it's all the little tiny joints on the end of each shaft I think there's 14 or 15 of them um, gearbox gearbox doesn't actually take that much um, some on the end of each shaft on the bearings bushes and uh, same on to the side then of course you open up the hatch and you have to manually lubricate the slider within the yoke all that lot takes about 10 minutes but uh, if you don't do it we all know what happens
I'll just re-grease the uh, ball gear. You can hear the grease screeching out. So I've set this shaper up, it's a three phase motor and I'm running it off an inverter which gives me variable speed via that button. So if you watch the Hertz, which is quite handy. I've set it up so that it's got a, a three second acceleration or start curve. And then I've got an inch facility. I'll switch that on. It puts it into four, into drive but only at 30% of whatever the Hertz is set at or 21 Hertz whichever is the lowest which is quite handy and it is literally you can which is handy um, because this this model um, wasn't fitted with a clutch and brake um, it's the same castings as the ones that are so these two lugs would carry a lever assembly and then on the rear end of that there was a, a, a like a, a cone clutch and drive um, so it's not on this it had the advantage of it, not only had it got the clutch and brake it had also got a, a set of levers to convert the um, gear change from being at the back to a set of levers down here well, that I think was the M series that came after this, and uh, the M series also had a, a work table which you could rotate, uh, whereas mine was fixed. Now, during the restoration, and you could see it on an earlier video, I've put that plate in and added in. You can see it in the see the round disc and the clamp. So I'm part way through the modifications necessary if I want to now I can take out uh, the four securing studs at the front rotate the box to wherever I want it and then clamp it up internally but I need to make a front support to carry it so it's not all on the weight of the uh, fixing screws inside but that's a, another project for later on uh, the vice is off a slightly bigger machine um, I bought the vice separately because the, the shaper didn't come with one and as a result i've got the box off it which i think is off of it's either a 16 or an 18 inch machine this one's a 14 inch stroke that's running in its third fastest gear and if i wind it up now That's 50% faster, which is the same as going up another gear. And I've got one, one left in reserve. And that would be like dropping it down again. Right, I've got to get set up for putting these key ones.
one of the things when I was setting up the shaper, uh, it just seems to take me an age at the moment, is just making sure nothing's going to collide. Now, the centre line of that, which is where the tool fits, and still too high here, so it's got to drop down, which means that's going to collide. So I've got to drop the tool down, and then drop the workbox down. I guess it's just an experience thing. But yeah, setup just to, seems to take me forever. And then you run into the next problem, which is on this reverse stroke. It's kicking that up. So I'm going to have to either I've either got to move the vise or put a spacer at the back of the gear to the back of the vise, which is what I'll do. And then I can move the head forward. <laughs> yeah, like I say, just seems to take me an age. So that's the setup. Now this gear is only an inch thick, the next one's two inches, so I've just set it up once and then all I've got to do is swap the gear over and centre it. Time for a cup of tea and then we'll come and cut it. Right, so we're set up to cut this. Um, there's two schools of thought for cutting keyways. One is that you cut the keyway with the tool running upside down as it is there. So the keyway will be cut on the top face. The other school of thought is that you run it the other way around but you have to lock your clapper box. And my clapper box is already locked. So I'm gonna try both. My, my gut feel says it'll actually cut better uh, on the bottom because it's easier to get the lubrication there uh, Anyway, we're gonna have to see first thing for me to do is to basically just touch off and make sure I've got everything centralized So we're gonna wind the speed down Inch it to where we want it I've got to remember which way you wind the handle. I'm taking it fairly gently because uh, it's a lot of tools stick out and the workpiece is a bit higher in the vice than I would like. I'm touching off on both corners so I'm happy with that. I've just put my oiling brush down. <laughs> Touching on the corners now, so we're getting a cut. Stop that out of the way and gonna see how that's looking. Looks pretty even. Letting that other spring pass or two. You see, it's still cutting. I'm 
you give it a spring pass. And my, callip, my callipers are a little bit uh, worn so they're not 100% reliable. Oh, that's 65. Get in there, see if it goes in. That'll do. One down, one to go. Fairly painless so far. So I'm going to use the same setup because uh, I don't want to have to swap that bar 180 degrees over and then make sure everything's lined up again. I could have done with a V block, but I haven't got one big enough. Right, so. Uh, everything remaining the same we're gonna just inch it through and make sure we've got it central and uh, as uh, was it rinse and repeat as uh, the guys say That'll do. And clean that up and uh... oh, so they're my first two keyways I've ever cut. That's bloody bloody good that is. Yeah, quite impressed with that. As I say, I've never cut keyways before. Um, it's, it's not something I've had a need for. Um, this one's a little little bit snug on its uh, mandrel, but it's not the keyway, it's the idea of the gear. And it's got a bit of swarf in there, but that's straight off, I've not even cleaned that yet. So I've got to clean them out, just make sure there's no burrs and then uh, we'll see how they fit. So I've cleaned it out, took the burrs out. That's the shaft, the uh, collar if you like. Right, yeah, that's just about how it is on the other one. And that's it. Quite happy with that. 
and just should be able to just tap it out. Snug without being overly tight. Yeah, good stuff. Right, I think we've got enough to get a video together, so uh, that's my uh, evening spent doing that.